One of the largest hepatitis C outbreaks in U.S. history is happening in Minot, North Dakota, and it's happening to one of the most vulnerable demographic groups in America, the elderly. Now up to 47 of 50 confirmed cases in that community are patients of Manor Care Health, a skilled nursing facility. They're rejecting claims that they're responsible for infecting their elderly patients with this chronic liver disease. Now, two of those infected seniors, along with their attorney, Mike Miller, are starting a class action lawsuit against the Ohio-based company. This to go in tandem with a lawsuit they already filed last year after becoming infected. Those Manor Care residents sued the company in a U.S. district court back in April for an undisclosed amount in damages. While the investigation to find the source of the infection is still underway, state and federal health officials suspect that it may stem from negligence in either foot care, nail care, or blood service. However, Manor Care, who operates more than 500 similar specialty needs facilities across the country, continue to refute these claims and have filed their own lawsuit against Trinity Health, a hospital in Minot, alleging that it was a failure on their part that led to the outbreak. I spoke with hospital officials at Trinity Health who also shared a statement with their position on the case, and they say Trinity feels confident that they will be cleared of all allegations since the North Dakota Department of Health has already reviewed their infection control procedures and failed to find any procedural lapses. I reached out to Manor Care officials as well who released a statement to me that said as of October 31st, 2013, they no longer use third-party phlebotomy services and do all their own blood work in-house and emphasize that since making these changes, there have been no new cases of hepatitis C transmission. Judge Karen Klein, who's handling the class action lawsuit, is expected to make a ruling in the coming months. In Washington, Manila Chan, RT. The picnics, the bug spray warnings, the macro-focused pictures of mosquitoes. Get ready, America. The latest mosquito virus scare has a name as you sit out for that 4th of July barbecue. Coupled with the synovial thickening in the joints, I think we're looking at chikungunya virus. Chick pea, that's found in Africa, isn't it? It's probably fair to say if you first hear of a virus through a basic cable crime drama, it hasn't reached the American mainstream yet. There's a reason for that. Chikungunya so far hasn't reached much beyond southern U.S. states like Florida. Health officials are now telling us Pinellas County has its first confirmed case of this virus. This latest victim had recently traveled to the Caribbean, like many others already diagnosed. This virus is rarely deadly, but it can cause severe and even disabling pain. While the virus appears to have originated in Africa, countries in Central America and the Caribbean, like San Salvador and Haiti, are now trying to fumigate neighborhoods to control chikungunya's spread. Al Jazeera noted in April U.S. states might see the virus soon because of its makeup and travelers not realizing they were carriers. And because it's been observed in temperate climates, the virus is expected eventually to reach the U.S. It more than likely will be introduced here into the United States and be our next West Nile. And there's the phrase no one wanted to hear. NBC reports since West Nile reached the U.S. in 1999, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention documented roughly 40,000 cases and 1,668 died from infection. It remains to be seen whether chikungunya will cause the kind of massive media coverage we saw with West Nile or something closer to the false panic of the Africanized or killer bees from the 1970s. Wait a minute. You must be the... That's right, gringo. <laughs> The killer bees! All jokes aside, the virus is a serious health concern in areas where fumigation isn't working and access to health care isn't as abundant as the U.S. NBC reports chikungunya got its name from the word in Mozambique that describes the intense joint pain caused by the virus. There is no current cure for the virus, though the National Institutes of Health gave the University of Texas Medical Branch a four-year, $3 million grant to try to find one in 2011. It's a mystery illness that's spreading across the country tonight. Cases of a potentially deadly respiratory virus may already be here in Ohio. Not on your sides, John Genovese joins us live with what doctors think this may be and how local health officials are responding. John? 
Julie, we're told at first symptoms of the virus are like a common cold, but they can quickly become more severe. Already more than 1,000 kids have been hospitalized nationwide, and doctors here at Children's Hospital say they're on the lookout. It may not seem very serious, but then... White as a ghost, blue lips, he just passed out. This 13-year-old rushed to a Colorado hospital. My lungs started sort of closing up. Now health officials are hoping to open and uncover exactly what it is. The CDC suspects it's enterovirus D68, a respiratory illness that looks a lot like the common cold. Doctors say young children and anyone with asthma are most vulnerable. Children tend to get the harshest symptoms because naturally they're younger and haven't developed the immunities that we have. Mike Samet with the Hamilton County Public Health Department tells us local officials are keeping a close eye on the illness. We're certainly watching the virus. Like I said, it's up in Columbus, uh, which is pretty close, and uh, these things tend to make their way around pretty quickly. Besides in Columbus, cases believed to be the virus have been spotted in Colorado and Illinois. Doctors at one Kansas City the hospital are seeing around 30 children a day with symptoms. Of those, around 15 percent are placed in intensive care. We talk back and forth through the Ohio Department of Health 24-7. Uh, um, we see reports. We see what's coming. Our epidemiology team is constantly in contact with the uh, health agencies around the region as well as with CDC. For now, it remains a virus without a vaccine. It can develop year-round, but is most common now. CDC says we see it very often in late summer, uh, which makes sense because kids are going back to school. A place where the virus can quickly spread. Simple precautions were told that could minimize the risk. Wash your hands, wash your hands often. Soap, water, uh, disinfect areas where other people touch. If somebody's ill and has you're coughing and sneezing around you, best to stay away. Now a spokesman for Children's Hospital tells us they're seeing as many cases of respiratory illness as they ever have. Nothing more severe than usual, but they say they're keeping an eye on this, and so are we. For now, reporting live, John Jenna, VC9, on your side. Indeed we are. Thanks, John. Chagas disease is usually thought of as a tropical disease found in places like Guatemala or Brazil. But researchers recently found that the parasite that causes Chagas disease was present in the blood of some Texans. I'm Erin White with your latest health news. Houston, Texas began screening blood donors for Chagas disease in 2007. A small study of those blood donors found that 17 had been infected with the parasite that causes Chagas. Untreated Chagas disease may lead to heart disease decades later. Many people don't know they have been bitten by the bug that causes Chagas disease because the swelling at the side of the bite, similar to that of many more harmless bug bites, goes away. Patients may also have mild flu-like symptoms that go away. But if the parasite causes Chagas disease, the disease may slowly cause damage to the heart. Speak with your doctor about testing for Chagas disease. This tiny blood-sucking bug is creating tremendous concern for North American health officials. It carries a disease called Chagas, an infection that has no known cure and is ravaging poor communities. Because the illness is hard to detect and has a long incubation period, doctors have called it the new AIDS of the Americas. Chaga positivo. They told me I had Chagas disease, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand. I'd never even heard of it. I found out about it in the information sessions. I discovered it was very dangerous, that you can die from it. Chagas disease is, for, is serious for people who actually get the chronic form of the disease. Dr. Ronald Primus is a specialist in exotic infectious diseases. He says Chagas is worrisome because it can thrive in an immigrant population that can't afford medical care. Uh, the chance of getting bit by these particular bugs is, is actually quite low. Uh, but they, and, and it does not get spread person to person. However, health officials in the United States are concerned because the thing is if it does get into the blood supply or into organ supply, um, you can transmit Chagas to other uh, individuals. Um, the other thing is that now that there's global warming and you know, the theoretical spread of the disease and the you know, possibility of these redubiate bugs coming up and migrating north from Central America into the United States, um, you run a much greater risk of having more of the population infected. Right now, more than 8 million people are infected with Chagas worldwide, mostly in Latin American countries that include Bolivia, Mexico, and Colombia. 
Its symptoms include fever, swelling in one eye, and digestive problems. More than 300,000 people in the United States have been diagnosed with Chagas. It's a disease that produces parasites in the bloodstream, parasites that can make their way to the human heart and cause heart failure. Unfortunately for most victims, by the time heart problems show up, it's generally too late for treatment. If discovered early, Chagas can be treated with an aggressive three-month application of moderately expensive drugs. But some feel because the disease only affects the poor, there is little incentive for drug companies to find alternative treatments or even a cure. Gary Anthony Ramsey, Press TV, New York. Good news! Science discovered a virus that makes you dumber. Wait, that's bad news. Oh, I screwed up. Don't roll the in. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Joe, guest hosting for D News. Scientists from the University of Nebraska, working in conjunction with scientists from Johns Hopkins Medical School, were getting their science on while studying the wonderful world of throat microbes when they accidentally stumbled upon a microorganism that they believe literally makes people, to put it delicately, stupid. The virus is known as chlorovirus ATCV1, and they discovered it inside the throats of 40 out of 92 volunteers. But before this study, science only found the stuff lurking in green algae, kicking it in freshwater lakes. Now, researchers have yet to figure out how chlorovirus ATCV1 migrates from our lakes and streams to the moist safe haven of human throats. If it migrates at all, they're not sure how it gets inside. But once it is, the microorganism is like that kid down the street that your parents didn't want you playing with because he had an affinity for the sound of breaking glass and the look of fire and was a straight up bad influence that made you more dumber -er. After infiltrating and swabbing the throats of the 92 participants, the researchers proceeded to subject the volunteers to a number of cognitive tests measuring attention span as well as speed and accuracy in visual processing. And lo and behold, the 44% carrying chlorovirus ATCV1 scored an average of 7 to 9 points lower on the tests, totally disappointing their overbearing parents in the process. I'm not dumb, Dad. My body is just home to a brain-altering microorganism that ravages my intelligence. Jeez, I'm out of here. I'm going to go hang out with Ryan Jacoby. We're going to throw rocks at windows and light a tree stump on fire. To double check the findings, the scientists did what scientists tend to do and experimented on unsuspecting mice, injecting a bunch of Stuart Littles with ATCV1 and placed them in a mouse maze. And they got dumb. The stupid juice seeped into the hippocampus and scrambled memory formation and learning pathways, making it increasingly difficult for the mice to navigate the labyrinth and get accepted into Mouse Harvard. Now, this is super interesting for a number of reasons, but here's the thing. Our bodies are slathered inside and out with all sorts of microorganisms, and most are innocuous, but this study showcases that even though our immune systems may not be affected by a tiny intruder, our cognitive functions may still fall victim to their exploits. So the body stays strong while the mind secretly withers away. Dr. Robert Yolkin, co-author of the study, said, on average, people with the virus had perhaps a 5 to 10 percent decrease in the domains of brain function we measured. That's probably not noticeable in day-to-day -day conversation or activity, but is significant. It's kind of like metachlorians from Star Wars that are inside the Jedis, but instead of making you able to lift rocks with your mind, it just makes you scream at Rubik's Cubes. Taking things a step further, science will try to understand the subtle effects of all the tiny hitchhikers on our bodies and will most certainly try to discover ways to alter the microorganism makeup inside us to make us not just healthier, but smarter as well. Cool. Are you serious? Ebola! What? This is terrible! And the lies, the media is just bold-faced lying. Well, they're finally reporting that 5,160 people have died in West Africa from Ebola out of 14,098 cases, including 50 new deaths break out in Congo. But the facts are war, uh, Doctors Without Borders are telling us they found two different villages where everybody in the village was dead. Everybody was dead. Half the people were buried and the other half were just bodies were laying everywhere. Dead. And these are not counted in the numbers. Over 200 and some in one location, over 200 in another. They're not even in the numbers. Doctors Without Borders believe that the number of deaths is, is over 20,000. This thing is out of control. Now, we're working hard. And I know that there's 
uh, World Health Organization. I know the CDC. I know Doctors Without Borders. I know Sumerian Purse and other missionary groups are all fighting against this plague, trying to stop Ebola. But folks, it is a plague, and it's not over. And there will be more plagues and pestilence and diseases, according to Jesus in Matthew 24, and also Revelation 15, 1, those seven angels having seven vials, ready to pour out the seven last plagues upon the earth. I'm telling you, we're living in the last days. Don't miss today's live broadcast at our website, 12 noon Eastern at www.paulvagleyprophecy.com. I want you to get saved because time's running out. Open your eyes, folks. It's seriously happening. Baby, don't go in there, please. They got Ebola. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Man, please, I'm way smarter than my boss. <laughs> Look, I called in sick today, right? Mm. Told him I had the 24-hour walking Ebola. <laughs> ah. Ebola. <laughs> Man, please, I'm way smarter than my boss. <laughs> Look, I called in sick today, right? Mm. Told him I had the 24-hour walking Ebola. <laughs> <laughs>